Savior, you can move that mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Altar of salvation. Savior, you can move that mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Say, Savior, say, he can move. My God is mighty. Mighty to say, he is mighty to forever. such a profound, such a very fireful revelation God has brought upon us tonight. The apostolic scepter is nomadic in nature. You cannot be confined to a space. Anywhere the wind blows you, you journey by the wind. Because it is God that chooses where he effects his government part time. I've said this to apologize for coming late. We were still affronting and raising the banner of Jesus across other fields. And so we still thank God for every great thing he has done in our midst before now. Let's celebrate our pastor, Pastor John, for such a marvelous time of his station. I just want to raise, I want to raise a prayer point quickly, and we pray. Today being Father's Day, we want to celebrate all the fathers in the house we also want to say special prayers that may we be fathers indeed may we raise fathers indeed Amen. and may we know fathers indeed Amen. let's look one more time on what God has been showing us and then we look for a place and pray I promise you, you will not stay longer than the usual service. It's a promise. In my father's house, there is a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Listen, it was Jesus that says, in my father's house, there are many mansions. He says, I go to prepare a place. And so when we heard that, the average heart conceives that scripture to mean that Jesus is saying, he wants to go and finalize your building. Because a lot of people died or claimed they died and that they came back to life and that the reason why they were sent back from the afterlife was because they said that they have not completed their building yet so that they should should come back. <laughs> so when Jesus says, in my father's house are many mansions, what was he saying? For a long time, the house of God was a tabernacle. The house of God was a temple. 
for a long time, there were many rituals deployed to host God. For a long time, men will have to journey from regions, from distance, just so that they can contemplate on the essence of the God of Israel because his, his being was captured within physical spaces. But a new wave, a new move, a new agenda of God was introduced into time and Jesus became a lecturer of that new curriculum. So he began to introduce a new meaning of house. He began to teach what temple now is. And so on a certain day, him and his disciples were just moving and he carelessly made a statement that passers-by were offended at. He said, destroy this temple. And in three days, I will raise it up. Meanwhile, that rebuilt temple, because that's not the first temple, Solomon's temple was destroyed. So the, the younger ones came and tried to rebuild it. They used 46 years to rebuild it. In Ezra chapter 3, from verse 10, the younger ones came to dedicate the temple that they have built and they were rejoicing. A sound of celebration. The elders among them began to cry. They were weeping. So the sound people heard was a strange sound. It was a blend of joy and sorrow. So he necessitated a prophecy to leave the hallowed altars of God. So in Haggai chapter 2 verse 9, God consoled Israel by telling them the glory of of the latter house shall be greater than the former. Now, that utterance is a consolation to the tears of the elders, those who have beheld his wonders in the days of old, and they now see that all of this generation are just doing... People worshipped God, and the glory of God settled like a mist, settled like a cloud, a real cloud, Descended and came upon the tabernacle, and people became scared. Now we use smoke machine because it's, it's simulation. If the elders look at those things, they will cry. <laughs> so Jesus says, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. They, they, they didn't know that they have updated the definition of temple, it is no longer a building built with bricks and clay. A temple is now the bodies of men. The Bible says, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. So he says, I go to prepare a place. He was not talking about, I want to go to heaven so that we can hasten mother cat so that they can in my father's house, not houses. Inside one house are many mansions. The way inside one seed of corn are many other seeds, but something activates the mystery of multiplication. It's called death. When he says, I go to prepare a place, he was heading to the cross. He was going to the grave. Because inside that one house, God can now have mansions. You know why? He is a house. But Jesus was not going to secure for us what he had with God. He was going to secure for us his exalted glory. So the Bible says, as he is now, so are we in this world. Do you know how he is? How he is now was not how he was when he walked the earth. He walked the earth only in the power of the Holy Ghost. But now he has been decorated as king of kings and lord of lords and all power has been given unto him both in heaven and on earth and at the mention of his name every knee must bow every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord so if the Bible says as he is now so are we this is the reason why God resurrected him with his physical body so that it is the man, Christ Jesus, that is sitting down there. I go to prepare a place. Maybe you will understand Ephesians 2.10 now. In my father's house there is a place for me. I'm a child of God. 
Look at me. The scripture says in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, media, I, I want them to read it together. It says, for we are his workmanship created inside Christ Jesus. You know what they are telling you? They say anyhow you arrived, anyhow you enter time, that's not your real version. They say your real version is locked up in Christ. You were created in Christ Jesus. So the workmanship of God concerning your true identity is hidden in Christ. So if any man be in Christ, that's where the hidden potentials, the dimensions concealed from the ages, that's where you, you are. This is not you. You is inside Christ. That's not enough. He says, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. In Jeremiah 1 verse 5, he says, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you, I sanctified you, and I ordained you a prophet unto the nation. That version of you is only in Christ. There's a, there's a place for you in Christ Jesus. It is in Christ Jesus that the brightest manifestations of your being is captured. Anything outside Christ is a limitation. Meanwhile, outside Christ, you will have some advantage in yourself. There are areas where you'll be naturally good at. That is the temptation to trust in the arm of the flesh. But we were created in Christ Jesus unto every good works. In my father's house, there is a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. I was telling them yesterday in Kanu, I was telling them as important as salvation is, without transformation, you will be stunted. You can be saved. Salvation gives you passage, gives you access into the flights. It is transformation that determines how you fly. Salvation makes you enter the flights. It is transformation that chooses whether you fly in business class or in economy. God can only do business with you to what extent you have maximized the protocol of transformation. The pattern is the same from old till now. It never changes. It still remains fasting. It still remains prayer. It still remains study of the word. It still remains meditation. These things are the protocols. Anybody who maximizes them. Though that is why Adam was created an adult. They didn't create him as a baby. God did not bother creating him as infant so that God will not be playing with a child and then they, he grow up gradually. No. They created him as an adult to show you that in the eyes of spirit, growth is not change of size. Growth is resemblance. It is to what extent you are able to resemble a pattern. That's how they know how old you are. If they see the similitude of Jesus' image in you, they know that you have labored on the word for long. That it took a long period of contemplating us in a glass. The glory of the Lord, you are transformed into the same image even from glory to glory. Meanwhile, in Romans chapter 3 verse 23, he says, for all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. So what we lost when we fell was not our clothes. It was not clothes that was missing in Eden. It's glory. All sinned and fell short of glory. So if you gave your life to Jesus and the totality of the change we see in your life is your dressing style. That now you used to wear short skirt before, but now your skirt is long. It was not clothes that was missing in Eden. It's glory. And until glory is restored to your life, salvation has not finished its work. Next to salvation is transformation. And transformation is your own responsibility to submit yourself to that protocol. Today I want, to, I want to invite just a few people. Not everybody, actually. Just a few people. Every lower life is communicating this truth to us. I know I told you I would not take extra time. <laughs> but I wish there was time. <laughs> From the butterfly. 
it was a butterfly that they want to give birth to, but it will start as an egg. The egg is what arrived time, but the real intent was butterfly. I've given you this analogy before. You went and bought an egg but in the morning and you fried it and ate it as breakfast. What the chicken had in mind when she laid the egg was not breakfast. She had an intention to recreate herself. It is you that you, you apprehended the process and, and cut it halfway for your greedy self. Leave that egg alone. Let the egg stay on its own. Nothing will happen to it. It will still remain an egg, even if it stays for 40 years. But the moment koinonia is established, the moment fellowship between the chicken and the egg, she sat on it for 21 days. Something inside the egg will be formed. It is that thing that is formed inside the egg that has the right to break the egg. If anything external break the egg, it will be an abortion. So you arrive time in a form that is not your true capacity. It is your responsibility to maximize the protocol of transformation. This is why when you see people just waiting for somebody to encourage them to study the word of God, they say pray, you are just there, then they are begging you and say pray, please pray. The Bible said you don't know what you are missing. You will be stunted for life. It says building up yourself. Nobody will build you. Building up yourself in your most holy faith. The amplifier say, rise like an edifice. He say, leave the ground and ascend. It says, by praying in the Holy Ghost. For we all with unveiled faces, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, we are metamorphosed. So they know that you will arrive in a form that is not your true capacity, but the word can fast track your transformation. Isaiah 40, 31. They that wait upon the Lord, they will renew their strength. Then they will mount up with wings as eagles. I'm showing you all the promises that are tied to these very simple procedures of transformation. Fasting, the advantage. Study the word, the advantage. Prayer, the advantage. So you are the only one gaining from this thing. Your prayer did not add anything to God. Studying the word does not... So, as, see, Jesus, Jesus entered time as a human being. So, Jesus also capitalized on the protocol of transformation. Jesus was praying. As his custom was, early morning, he has withdrawn into a mountain to pray. God was praying. Jesus studied the word. Jesus studied so much that he was asking questions of, of elders. Jesus fasted. He did all this to lay hold on a possibility so that you too, he is now the pattern for us. You can arrive broken, you can arrive feeble but if you continue to press in this pathway, a day will come the things you are running from can run from you. Know what the average man wants? He wants somebody to show up and, and deliver him from all his challenge. Meanwhile, those, those, those platforms of deliverance, they are not guaranteed. What you are looking for is the intervention of the anointing through a vessel that God has impacted his glory upon. And every time the anointing commands deliverance, a warning comes to the person. They say, be careful, do not go back to your old ways, lest a more terrible fate will befall you. But the second platform for deliverance is the truth. You see what the anointing does? The anointing breaks the yoke. So the anointing can set you free. So there's a chain in your hand. The anointing comes huh? and either unlock the chain or breaks the chain. But the truth does not break the chain as an external force because the anointing is an external force colliding with your, your, your challenge and ridding you of every turbulence that has you know, kept you in disadvantaged. Because it's an external force. That's the anointing. But the truth is not an external force. The truth is capacity that you built that made your hand too big for that size of chain. So, because your hand became too big, the chain now broke. So you became free by stature. So the anointing can set you free. The truth will make you free. It is the truth impacts on the person, not the situation. 
The anointing impacts on the situation. It attacks the situation. The truth comes and, and engraces the person. It gives the person stature. It now makes it impossible to be a captive. Today I want you to take at least five minutes. I think that's all we have. Five minutes. What you are looking for is, Lord, the version of me that I have continued to work with. It has raised a lot of competition, a lot of arguments, a lot of challenges. I know this is not all that I can be. A butterfly goes from an egg to a lava to pupa, then an adult butterfly. You will never see the beauty. You will never see the glory until it has hit that place where the full stature of his manifestation is captured. Somebody's prayer is increase my hunger for spiritual things. That's the only way you can turn it tonight. There is a demand your generation places on you. But not this version of you. Not this version. Not this version. Men are undermining you, ignoring you because they have not seen anything excellent. Nothing divine is flowing through you. So brother, build up yourself in your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. Can you stir your spirit up in the next five minutes? I rise, I rise, I rise, I rise from stagnation, I rise. Pakataka pakai, sekete pakata pakate pai, shete te 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 te, betaka pakato, shebere kete pakatai, zapaka kotela, eleke de barahatai. I refuse to remain small. I rise like an edifice. Insist, 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 insist tonight. Wave goodbye to dimensions of weakness, dimensions of helplessness, dimensions of limitations. Wave goodbye. Journey, journey through the priesthood. Journey, journey through the instrument of prayer. Journey. I know I can be more than this. I just need more heat. I need more heat. This egg, this egg, this egg can become another life. Oh, 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 ambe, gloria, ye mi ho. Hongbe mi fo, hongbe mi sare. Oh, 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 ambe. Hongbe mi fo, hongbe mi sare. Oh, 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 ambe, gloria, ye mi ho. Oh, 
Home 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 Listen. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, from verse 20 to 21, it says, In a great house, there are many vessels. In a great house, there are many vessels. Then he began to separate them into categories. He says, Some to honor, some to dishonor. There are vessels of silver, there are vessels of gold, there are vessels of wood, there are vessels of clay. He says, If a man can purge himself, not God, it is you that will do it to yourself. If a man can purge himself, he shall be a vessel unto honor. quiet over your destiny the next two minutes can you declare everything you want to break into can you speak forth the realms you want to launch into Abra samye telo moni Efya temo koloti mena kayoni Efra temene kufoloto mena kaboni Efra suma natana benu huyoni Afra teleni Telieni Oko koko 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 ni Efra telebo la kapieni Efra sama no tove la minoni Tamino na mino tamino tamino Uya kateke buga holo Kagateke buga holo Kagateke buga holo Efra no mota vileni Afra tamoni Efra loni Ave go 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 go! Et tu as le mot, et prête à mon colo, gaglo gono. Seria botelo, et tu as le coco, et prête à mon colo, et tu as le 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 colo, I said, Monococo, I bet him in a toy, I bet him on a coco, I bet him on a covia, I bet him on a television, I bet him on a coco, I get him on a coco, I get him in a cat, I put him in a cat, I put him in a coco, I pen all, 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 Hey, 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 hey. 
Avelen, <laughs> I'm ready to meet no fire, you know, more coyo, lady. Sammy and Effina Moon, I tell them in a cone. Cambra Samina Falia Temoca Bonnet, Aviana Motel, Aquene Fele Motai, Ovanem in a cone. Cambra Samina Fita Bonon, I tell them in a good Amonuan, Avianeme Cofale Menu. Oria temena fae Sambre tagua temena fitia Atwene meka fola tamini Ambre selia muka venia Okono kokolo benani Itsiana mena fayo Itsiana mena fayo tena pinafoni Embre seni falo meno kaye Ivano moko koni Abre samina fate no makume Aviena muka titeve lemona Amya samina fala muka telemo I'm the name of Fayon. I'm ten ten contiete, what ten nefente. And twenty kitieta mento fati. And twenty nanti kuate feni. And twenty mena fanti. I'm the sam tona fati na katine kenene. I'm in a fatena gudu do hatene hetene. At twenty te komena tatine. At a tatine utakona tatatine. And twenty ante kete koni. And twenty na tu keti na panati kufatana niete. Embrasi dai. Hallelujah. 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 
the glory of God has settled upon us. Now, you can go into everything connected to you and prosper in it. It is the glory of God that has settled upon you. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. The favor of God has settled upon you like an incense. It has saturated your being. Now, this week, go back to everything that has continued to prove stubborn every door you have been knocking on that has not opened. And God will be opening strange doors for us. There are yokes that were also lifted. There were bondages that were broken. And now you are at liberty to serve your God. You are free from the curse that has continued to keep you small. Please go in this your might. Press further. As the Lord provokes you into the place of prayer, respond. Don't accept mediocrity. Don't accept this smallness. Just continue to contend. There are higher realms of glory, higher measures of manifestation. We labor. The pathways are already defined. Just continue in it. God bless you, increase you, and cause his face to shine upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. We take a few announcements and we go. That was on the latter note. By the grace of God, on Tuesday, we meet by 5 p.m. at Habikut Hall for Congress, which is our healing and communion service. Who is excited? <laughs> our experience at Congress has been celestial. So please, on Tuesdays, we meet at Habikut Hall, not here at TMC Hall, but Habikut Hall at our Nguan Yelwa Center every Tuesday for the healing and communion service. Also, the Anakazo Experience Baggy Villa Center is fully open and functional. Who is excited? <laughs> every Friday, every Friday, all roads leads to Baggy Villa, Omas Event Center. There you will meet one of God's finest servants burning in a blazing flame of revival. Please make sure you clear your schedules. I know you are a very busy person. So please squeeze time to be there on Friday as God will be doing us well. On Friday by 5 p.m. sharp at Omas Event Center, Baggy Villa. God will be blowing and noising great things even into our hearts. By the grace of God, Kaduna Solemn Assembly is here. <laughs> By the special grace of God, from the 11th to 13th of July, our city will be converging to receive marching orders and to hear God's current revelatory position for the season. So please clear your schedules, prepare, plan, and give towards the success of that conference. We need all the resources we can get because um, by the grace of God, we're looking forward to expanding our capacity more and more as God gives us grace. So please, we are open to all of your acts of benevolence. Continue to give towards the success of the meeting. By the grace of God, also, the following departments are open for new members to register their desire to be a part. Please, um, the HOD of the protocol department, the person of Mr. Abel Oino, can you be upstanding, please? You are interested in being a part of the protocol department, please try and see Abel after the meeting so that necessary um, conversations will be held to see if, of course, we can pursue that your desire um, further. Also, Pastor Edache, can you be upstanding wherever you are? Pastor Edache is there at the back, right at the back there. You want to be a part of the ushering team, please meet him and then we will take it up from there. Have we been blessed? Thank you so much for coming again. And I know that God has pushed us into higher measures of clarity. And he has improved our knowledge of him. Let's bow our heads in one minute. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
I thank you because you always hear me. Now I speak over your people. Let your favor be strong upon them. And let your seal of protection be put upon them. Take them out and bring them back safely again. Lord, prosper them even according to your will. And everything they put their hands to do in righteousness, let it prosper in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, even as you prosper them, insist on the prosperity of their souls so that at the end, we will all be rapturable in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you because you have continued to show us your favor and your help. I pray that you make it manifest in our life in higher measures even this week in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak over your finances. Let the hand of the Lord stretch your storehouses and increase your capacity. Let the windows of heaven be opened over your resources and let there be unusual increase in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke infirmities and sicknesses from your body and I declare you are healed in the name of Jesus Christ. And I prophesy every expectation that has kept you up at night, everything you are trusting God for, that call you are waiting for, that particular message you are waiting for in anticipation. Father, let the doors of expectation be open for your people in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father, because you have heard us. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I love you guys. And we salute you. God bless you. Tu senje to na baka chenza wa E to go gwe che agi pia bono Tu senje to baka chenza baka chenza wa Everything else can wait. 